You've probably seen tools that chop old or expired filament into pellets for recycling. Most open source cutters make short or discrete pieces up to 7 mm long. For molding or sheet press workflows, this size is fine. You don't need tight packing because everything goes into a hot melt pot anyway. But inside a screw extruder, those long pieces become a problem. This is called a barrel, and it's the heart of screw extrusion. To illustrate what happens inside, this printed diagram is used. Here we see the difference in fill ratio between longer and shorter pellets. With long asymmetric pellets, they tend to bridge across the screw channel instead of rolling like the shorter pellets will. They also create large air gaps that turn into popping bubbles during extrusion. You might think this is due to drying. That is correct, but only partially. Here, we've dried our longer pellets and still get extrusion snaps, but with short pellets, moisture only affects the surface. In miniature pellet extruders like Materium, this shows up as under extrusion, weak mixing, or even strand snapping from trapped bubbles. This machine was built to exactly solve that issue. This is Metafuse Chopper, a precision strand cutter designed to cut small pellets for small screw extruders just like Materium, and it's open source. Instead of 7mm chunks, it produces short compact pieces typically 4 millimeters or less. That length fills Materium's 12 millimeters screw channel efficiently, minimizing voids and improving melting uniformity. Now, some materials are easy to chop. PLA filaments, ABS, PTG, PP, they behave. But TPU, TPU is very different. TPU is soft, elastic, and heats up fast. Instead of shearing cleanly, they deform or wrap around shafts or stretch before they can get cut by the cutter. And the softer the grade of TPU, the problem gets worse. That's why industrial TPU pelletizing is usually done underwater to bring their temperature down so that it is brittle enough to crack with a cutter. So dry cutting TPU cleanly at this scale is not something you normally see. The main cutting mechanism is made up of two blades, a stationary knife and a rotating cutter. The stationary knife is a standard SCMT carbide insert, and the rotating cutter is a 19mm router end mill inspired by teaching text design. The filament enters the cutting point at a 45 degree angle for efficient shear. At 90 degrees, cutting torque increases with no benefit, so the blade angle is intentional. And because SCMT inserts are extremely hard, much harder than the rotating cutter itself, they practically never wear out in this application. The drivetrain is fully belt driven, no printed gears, no brass inserts slipping on shafts, and no gear noise. The belt drives soft silicon rollers that pull the filament in so the entire mechanism can run off from a single shaft. You can power it with a drill or with a motor with enough torque. Chopper was designed for continuous high-speed cutting with a power drill. A mount is also provided for unsupervised use while being motorized by a planetary stepper. A 10 to 1 planetary stepper is the minimum torque for this operation. And you're correct, a stepper is not necessarily fast, especially geared planetary ones like this. But Chopper was not built only for speed. It was built to run at the same pace as a small extruder. With small screw extruders like Materium, extrusion is slow. By combining chopper with extruders, they can synchronize and feed back the cut pellets right back into the system. This creates an actual compounding loop, something that normally requires specialized industrial equipments like twin screw extruders. That's how you unlock desktop compounding, mixing polymers, adding fillers, reviving old filament, even making new materials. I'll go deeper into this workflow in a dedicated video. The rollers are soft silicone instead of hard toothed pulleys. That gives them tolerance for irregular strand diameters and lets them slip safely during freak events like curled filament, kinks, bubbly strands, or weak materials like wood filled or brittle PLA. You can just yank them out. When the filament is nearly out, 
you can simply pull it free and leave nothing stuck in the feed path. The rollers do wear over time, but they're made from cheap silicone tubing you can cut yourself, or you can 3D print your own design. And this is the most important part, the knife clearance is adjustable down to nearly zero. This matters for soft or elastic materials like TPU, which deform instead of shearing, unless the clearance is extremely tight and stable under load. Most designs with fixed clearances simply can't achieve this. Bonus, if either the cutter or the knife gets damaged, simply bringing the knife closer will eliminate the need for replacement or just flip and use the other side of the SCMT insert. Chopper handles rigid filaments, flexible strands, and mixed materials, producing uniform 4mm feedstock for re-extrusion, cold mixing, compounding tests, or iterative melt-cut-melt -melt workflows. In direct extrusion, feedstock geometry matters. Shorter pieces reduce axial voids, improve heat transfer, stabilize back pressure, and give cleaner, more predictable output. They also mix better when you're cold blending materials before extruding them. It's a simple machine built for a very specific job. Turning strands or filaments into correctly sized feedstock for small screw extruders like Materium to achieve compounding. Chopper is open source, compact, and engineered for the workflow I use every day. CAD files, including the STLs and the STPs, are public so you can modify or adapt them according to your needs. In the published open source files, I've included two kinds of mountings. The first one is a simple funnel to direct the pellet flow outward. And the second is the one that is compatible with any soda bottle that you want to use if you want to collect the output pellets. You can buy or source the metal parts or 3D print the plastic parts your own. If you want guaranteed correct components, or you want to support what we're doing, you can buy the kit at metafuse.tech. Note that when this video goes live, the website might still be under construction.